Okay, members uh, and ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to tonight's planning committee meeting. My name is Councillor Peter Richards and I will be chairing tonight's meeting. Um, some housekeeping to start with. We're not expecting there to be any uh, fire alarms, but if there is one, please do follow us out to the car park next to the windmill uh, and we can make sure that everyone has got out safely. Mobile phones, if you would turn them off, that would be helpful. I'm perfectly happy for you to use them provided they don't distract uh, and deter from the flow of the meeting but please at the minimum please can you put them on silent um, so that we don't have any distractions uh, the, this meeting is uh, a meeting in public it is not a public meeting so only those people that have registered to speak will be allowed to speak um, at the appropriate time i will call you forward to sit in the chair in the middle if you could please keep your mask on until you are sat down um, and once you're finished uh, please stay seated for questions and then uh, when you are leaving the seat, if you could please use the uh, wipes to give the desk a quick wipe and the, and the microphone a quick wipe and also sanitise your hands. There's a bin just to the left hand side as you're sat there uh, to put those in. That would be great. OK, let's do some introductions uh, first of all. So uh, to my far right, we have Sophie Jarrett, who is our committee services uh, representative. To my immediate right, we have Ross Chambers, who is our solicitor. Uh, and in no particular order, we have our planners, who are Joe Brook, Aaron Weatherston and Stuart Flaherty. Uh, we have joining us on uh, online, so on the big screens, we have Paul Harris. And to my immediate left, we have David Jeffries, who is our planning manager. David, I think you have a, something you'd like to say for us. Thank you, Chair. My role is to provide impartial advice and to assist members in their decision taking. Thank you. Marvellous. Thank you very much. OK, let's move into the agenda proper. So first of all, apologies for absence. Do we have any apologies, please? Thank you, Chairman. We have apologies from Councillors Crump and Eden tonight. Marvellous. Thank you very much. And disclosures of interest members. Um, there are two that I'm going to kick us off with, if I may, uh, on application 2102854 out that land north of Collingham Lane in Long Eatington. I've certainly received uh, various emails and correspondence in relation to that. I believe it's been copied into all of you. Uh, I'm seeing lots of nods, so we'll do a blanket disclosure on that one. Um, and also, um, uh, I th I'm trying to remember which one it was now. I think it's Pitton Hill Cottages 2102302 FUL. Again, a couple of emails that I've had on that one uh, from parish councils and, and representatives. So um, I'm seeing lots of nods. I'm assuming you've all received the same. Yep, so we'll do a blanket for that one. Any other disclosures we want to make? Councillor Adam first. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, just to say that I'm the ward member for um, <clears throat> the first application, um, and so I won't be staying on the committee for that particular one. OK, marvellous. Councillor Mills? Yeah. Oh gosh, thank you to the chairman. Um, on item five on the agenda, uh, the stables at Mollington Lane. I'm actually the county councillor for, for that uh, area. And on um, item six on the agenda for Pint Hill Cottages, I am a ward member, but I won't be voting and uh, I'll step back from the, uh, the from the desk when uh, debating. Thank you. Uh, are we? Uh, so are you stepping back on both of those? So the stables in Wellington Lane and um, uh, Pitton Hill Cottages, or just one of them? Just the one. Just the Pitton. Just the Pitton Hill Cottages. Yeah, and you'll remain for the stables yeah. in Warmington. Yeah, okay. Thank, thank you very much, uh, members. Any other disclosures at this stage? No. In that case, minutes. Is everyone happy with the minutes as they are presented? Uh, if I could just have a quick nod. Yes, everyone's all good. Thumbs up. I'll sign those after. OK, we are going to do a slight uh, rejig of the running order. Um, you'll note in your update sheet, uh, item uh, number four on our list is 2102854 out land at Collingham Lane in Long Itchington. We have had an update. It, um, there is an updated uh, recommendation, which is to defer. Uh, for, and for the details laid out in that update sheet. Um, could I, I think we should take that now. So if I could have a proposal to defer uh, for the reasons set out, Councillor Kendall, seconded by uh, Councillor Mills. Uh, a quick show of hands, please, that are in agreement. Obviously, Councillor Adam can't vote on this one. I believe that to be unanimous. So uh, we will be deferring that or have deferred that item. Um, and the uh, we will be bringing forward uh, application, uh, sorry, item number seven, which is application 2103308 Vary, that is Orchard Nurseries uh, in Welford on Avon. Uh, in line with the constitution, we have no registered uh, parish council or um, uh, councillor, um, and the uh, the applicants have uh, removed their registration to speak, so we have no speakers at all now. Uh, so we will be delegating that. Could I have a proposer to delegate that? Councillor Adam seconded. Uh, Councillor Jennings, please, um, and a show of hands, please, for those in favour. 
That is unanimous. OK, marvellous. So uh, our first item then for this evening will be application reference 21014230 FUL, the stables in uh, Warmington. And our presenting officer is Aaron Weatherson. Aaron, over to you. Thank you, Chairman. The application site lies to the east of Warmington, which is identified as an all of the settlement within the Council's adopted core strategy and identified by the black dot on this plan just here. This slide shows the application site outlined in red. The site lies within the Ironstone Hill Special Landscape Area and is crossed by public right of way SM160, which you can see here with a green dash line. To the south of the application site. Sorry, is that better? OK. To the south of the application site lies Warmington Conservation Area, which is shown just here with the pink line, and a Grade 2 listed building, which is shown just here in red. This is the closest neighbouring property to the site. The site lies outside of the Cotswolds area of outstanding natural beauty. However, the land to the south of Monington Lane, just south of this lane here, falls within this designation. The site also falls within 500 metres of ancient woodlands. The existing access from Monington Lane is proposed to be retained, just here. To the east of the site lies an existing sewage works, just here, and to the south, a garage. The site comprises of a parcel of land with planning permission for a gypsy and traveller site with a personal permission. Planning permission is sought to encompass the land associated with the most recent permission, 1602869 full. The changes proposed as part of this application include a substitution of a touring caravan for a new mobile static home and addition of a further family who have links to the site to the current occupants. If granted, this will result in four mobile homes on the land, one touring caravan, and the erection of one amenity building for four families and their resident dependents and associated works. This slide shows an aerial image of the area with the approximate location of the site outlined in red, just here. Existing caravans on the land are visible in this image, along with the access to the Monington Lane to the south. The wider parcel of land comprises of four areas. The two to the north, here and here, are used for the sighting of caravans. There's then an open parcel of land shown just here, which is crossed by public right of way SM160 in this location just here. And closest to the road, planning permission was granted for stables in 2006. The wider parcel of land is screened by existing vegetation on all sides, here to the north, to the east and to the south. The landscape within the immediate area of the site is relatively flat, with open fields visible to the north, to the east and to the west of the application site. Warmington is visible just here on the slide. This slide shows proposed application site outlined in red on the right hand side of this slide and the red line associated with the most recent planning permission on the site on the left. This slide shows a proposed site plan. You can see on the right hand side of the slide, the main difference is changing a touring pitch, which is here, to a new mobile static home and changes to the landscaping. The existing amenity building, which was previously approved, is proposed in the same location just here. This slide shows proposed floor plans and elevations of the amenity building, which is simple in design with a pitched roof. The building will measure approximately 2.7 metres to the eaves and 4.4 metres to the ridge is proposed to be finished in timber boarding under a tile roof. This slide shows a photograph taken from the access road looking in a southern direction towards Mollington Lane, which you can see just here. To the right of the image, you can see the extent of the public right of way that crosses the site through to the countryside beyond and the land where planning permission was granted for the stable building closest to Mollington Lane. This slide shows two photographs taken within the parcel of land closest to Mollington Lane, looking back towards the application site. You can see the parcel of land where the footpath crosses with the caravans to the rear of this image. And the image to the right, you can see the access road from Mollington Lane, which is the right of this photograph, leading into the application site. This slide shows a photograph of the southern part of the application site, looking west from the access road with existing caravans on the land. And this photograph was taken looking at the northern portion of the application site, looking in a northwestern direction, you can see just here on the plan. 
This slide shows a photograph taken from public right of way SM160 looking west towards the application site. See the existing gas works, sewage treatment works just here and the application site behind. And this photograph was taken from public right of way SM160 looking east towards the application site and the arrow shows the approximate location of the site just here. This final slide shows a photograph taken from Mollington Lane from within the conservation area boundary. The approximate location of the site is just where the arrow is shown. You can see the Grade 2 listed building located just to the right of this image. There are a number of updates for this application which have been circulated on the update sheet, including two additional notes. It is recommended that planning permission be granted subject to conditions and notes for the reasons outlined in the officer report. Thank you. Erin, thank you very much. Uh, we will call forward our first speaker on this item, who is Councillor Mark Burstall, Chairman of Warmington and Alscott Parish Council. Good evening and welcome. And once you're settled, you'll have three minutes. Um, you'll press if you press the button in the middle. I don't know if you've used this before. If you press the button in the middle, it'll turn red and you'll be able to start speaking. You'll have three minutes. If you stay seated for questions afterwards, otherwise, whenever you're ready, you're free to start. Good evening. Uh, one important fact stands out in this application. This is an attempt to increase the number of permanent traveller pitches on the site by one. That may not sound very much, but in reality, it's a 33% increase in the number of static caravans. Once again, the applicant has seen fit to act first and then make a retrospective application once found out. The site has a significant planning history with the council's decisions being regularly appealed. In each case, the planning inspector has seen fit to impose a strict limit on the number of stat static caravans that should be allowed. And they have set out very good reasons why such limits should be imposed. I urge you to take these into consideration. The applicant remains in breach of some of the conditions previously imposed. The planning statement, which accompanies the application form, is so heavily redacted that it is meaningless and provides no basis for considering the merits of the application. There are a number of core strategy policies which must be taken into account. CS8, the site is immediately adjacent to the Warmington Conservation Area and to a listed building. CS11, the site is adjacent to the Cotswold AONB and as such should be protected. It appears that the Cotswold Conservation Board were not consulted on this application. Their views are important. The application site lies within the designated special landscape area known as the Ironstone Hills Fringe. The purpose of the special landscape area designation is to protect, enhance and facilitate better management of the best of the area's landscapes outside the Cotswold AONB. CS21 covers gypsies and travellers and travelling show people, and I refer you in particular to sections 2, 3 and 11. Also, CS217 location, the nearest local service village is Fenny Compton, which is almost twice as far as the two miles specified in government guidance. No public transport goes there. CS2112 requires arrangements to be put in place to ensure the proper management of the site, to seek to ensure community cohesion between the settled and traveller communities. Sadly, the opposite is true. There is already a great deal of tension between the settled local community and the travellers. Many local people have told me they wanted to object to this application, but felt unable to do so because of a perceived threat to them and their families. If you decide to grant this application, then something must be done to resolve this issue. Were this anything other than a traveller site, I have no doubt that the planning department would view it rather differently. It may be that they would welcome the additional pitch because of the difficulty that Stratford has in meeting its target. But the need for pitches should not be exaggerated. In nearby Farnborough, there are insufficient travellers to take up the available pitches. I ask you to reject this application on the basis that it conflicts with so many core strategy clauses and that it represents overdevelopment of the site. Thank you. Mr. Bursell, thank you very much for that. Members, do we have any questions for our parish councillor? Councillor Mills. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mark, did you 
I, I misunderstood. Did you say that it was limited to the number of caravans on there? Uh, yes, the previous planning inspectors have put a limit of three. Right. Permanent caravans. OK. And this application is seeking to exchange a mobile caravan for a static caravan. Right, OK. In effect, that increases the number of pictures by one. Got that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Curtis. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for that presentation. Um, you mentioned um, briefly, Mark, um, that the applicant is in breach of previous conditions, but you didn't give any further detail. We, could you give some more detail on that, please? If you, if you have them to hand. I'm concerned that, that any breaches would be uh, more relevant, uh, directed towards our um, uh, the appropriate teams within the district council. It's not for us to decide on those. Uh, and unless there's clear evidence that's been presented, which it hasn't been to date, then we probably shouldn't be uh, taking that into our consideration. Mm. Unless you have any other questions. I'm not inclined to agree, Chair, but thank you. Councillor Adam. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, it's just in re regard to availability of alternative sites, you mentioned that there was somewhere else nearby that had availability. Where was that, sorry? OK, any other questions for our parish councillor? No, in that case, Councillor Bessel, thank you very much for your time and contribution this evening. And thank you for preparing to clean the desk for us. And while you do that, I will just let everyone know that our next speaker will be Councillor Fielding. Councillor Fielding, if you stay seated until Councillor Bessel has uh, left his seat, and then when you're ready, you can come forward. Thank you. Now, Councillor Fielding, uh, as you know, you'll have five minutes once you've plugged yourself in and got yourself settled. Uh, whenever you're ready, you may begin. It just makes all the difference to hearing what's being said, particularly when I'm sitting behind you all. Um, before I start, I'd like to make it clear that, that these comments based purely on planning matters. I respect the needs of the planning uh, of the planning uh, travelling community. Councillor Fielding, do you want to take your mask off? Oh, sorry. We might be able to hear you. Thanks. I have paused your time. I take, I take my mask off. My hearing aids come out. Um, I respect the needs of the uh, travelling community and I'm not against helping them to find suitable sites. I have, during my time on the planning committee, found a retrospective planning application goes against the spirit of the SDC's core strategy. This application is one of many that could be classified as creeping development. In, in the documentation you have before you concerning the application, you will see that there's been a number of planning applications for retrospective development. However, these have been granted on appeal. You will note on page 42, last paragraph, the applicant is, has still not dealt with the conditions that were set out in the planning inspector's report of 2016. Landscaping being the main failure joined together with other conditions. I do not understand why the officer is prepared to grant this application when applicant has not completed these works. The officer refers to other conditions. John, sorry, I've, I've paused your time again. Um, it, it seems your microphone is no longer on or was not. Your microphone doesn't appear to be on. Um, whilst I have heard everything, is it is it on now? Yeah, it's been on all Good. the time. OK, um, you. <laughs> I, I, we, I have heard everything. I've just been. Do you want me to start again? No, no, absolutely not. Um, if you can bring the microphone somewhere closer to you, so we might be able to hear can you a bit better. Can you take your mask off? I can hear you then. Fair enough. <laughs> um, if you just make sure your microphone is close enough to you, so that we can we can yeah. hear, that'd be great. Whenever you're ready, you can continue. Okay. I have paused your time. Well, I'll start on for, page 42, the last paragraph. The applicant has still not dealt with the conditions 
that was set out by the planning inspector's report of 2016, landscaping being the main failure, other than together with other conditions. I do not understand why the officer is prepared to grant this application when the applicant has not completed these works. The officer refers to conditions she will impose. Counsel Councillor Burstall has set out the core strategy that are relevant to this case. However, 21, CS 21, part 11 and 12 must be adhered to. They are important. My main concern is that will the conditions that SDC and the inspector imposed be carried out? And therefore, are we going to be granting permission with conditions which are then going to be ignored? Councillor Fielding, thank you very much. Uh, members, do we have any questions for Councillor Fielding, please? No? Happy this. Councillor Fielding, thank you very much for your time and contribution. Uh, while Councillor Fielding is uh, getting himself uh, taken away, could you, if you could please, please give the desk a wipe, Councillor Fielding? That would be great. Thank you very much. While he's doing that, we shall move into our next phase, which is um, questions or points of clarification to our officers. I've got a few listed, but I'll open up to the committee first to see if anyone wants to dive in and ask anything. Councillor Jennings. As it's been raised, uh, previous conditions haven't been haven't been met. Could you get a bit of clarification on that, please? So as part of this application, we're considering it as a new application and we have recommended conditions, including landscaping, to come in as part of this scheme that we're, we're looking at um, and those all meet the test. So we're happy that we get an updated landscaping scheme in relation to the, the changes that are proposed as part of this development. If I may follow on from that, we've obviously heard that there are breaches uh, or, or, or alleged breaches. Am I right? And, uh, and I think this is probably more uh, directed to our solicitor. Am I right in thinking that is a question for our, uh, our enforcement team? And if there are continued breaches or non-compliance with conditions that would go through our enforcement team, it is not for this committee to decide upon. Correct. That was simple. Thank you very much. Um, anyone else have any other questions before I dive through a couple of others? Councillor Adam. Thank you. Um, just one of the things that the parish councillor raised, which I asked on um, the availability of alternative sites. Adam, do you want to take your mask off? Oh, sorry. Please. I, I um, keep forgetting as well. We all do. Yeah. Um, the availability of um, alternative sites. I noticed in your report you've referenced um, the Warwickshire County Council owned sites, but um, he, he referenced one farmer in Showell. Um, do you have any information on that and the availability of alternatives? So when we look at these applications, we consider what, what provision we've got within the district. And um, Pathlo is the site, we've got 30 pitches, but it's full. So when we're looking at availability, I'm not aware of any other sites. Uh, these might be private sites, but in terms of um, in the local planning authority, Pathlo is a site where we have 30 pitches and it's currently full. So that's what we've considered as part of this scheme. Just as a follow on to that, is it our neighbouring um, local authorities availability? Is that material? We'd normally look in our district, so that's what we've done in this case um, to, to see if we've got anything in the district that might provide an alternative provision. Councillor Dixon. But, but in respect of pitches, whilst we've got some within our own uh, custody as such, uh, obviously when we're looking at the Gypsy Traveller assessment, we do include private pitches within that total assessment and numbers, etc. And therefore, if there's availability in Farnborough of private pitches which are available but not used, that is relevant. I think you what you what you should probably take as, as your reference is on page 40, which sets out our assessment of um, the Gypsy uh, Travel Show People assessment. Um, that's the council's evidence base on the availability of Gypsy pitches. It shows that there is a shortfall and a need to provide uh, 59 pitches over the forthcoming period. And that's the basis upon which we, we make our recommendation. OK, anyone else have any points of clarification before I chuck my couple in? They're very quick, so you'll be pleased to know. Um, uh, Erin, it's been alluded to that this is a re retrospective planning application. Um, based on the pictures I've seen, I don't think it is. Um, is it or isn't it? It is, yes. So in terms of the planning statement, we understand that the family has moved on to the site um, and the mobile static that they're living in is one that's come on site, which hasn't been considered as part of the previous application. OK, that's helpful. Thank you. And uh, I think uh, it was Councillor Burstall said the Cotswold Conservation Board hasn't been consulted. Should they have been or have they been? They have been consulted. We received no response. OK, marvellous. Thank you. Unless anyone else has any questions for Aaron, I will move into the debate. 
who would like to kick us off? Who am I going to pick on? Councillor Mills. Thank you, Mr Chairman. <clears throat> yeah, I, 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 I don't mean to play any reason why nobody likes uh, retrospective um, applications as this one is, but I, I was absolutely very impressed by uh, Councillor Burstall's um, statement um, with so many policies there uh, that I'm not sure we've contravened them. Um, in that case, um, I, I, I mean, if, it, if we have contra contravened all these policies uh, with, with this site, um, I'm afraid I'll have to go against the Office of Recommendation on this one, but I'll give it give it some more thought. Thank you. All right, thank you, Councillor Mills. Of course, it is within your gift as a decision maker to decide whether we have indeed, or this does contravene those policies. Councillor Dixon. Thank you, Chairman. I must admit, I was just looking at the uh, what's described as the GTAA, the Gypsy and Traveller Accommodation Assessment, where uh, again at the foot of page 20, we're advised, of course, uh, that the our Stratford Gypsy and Traveller Accommodation Assessment recognises that the need can be met through the intensification of existing traveller sites and the provision of new permanent traveller sites. So this is basically part of the former option, i.e. intensification. And given the size of that site, as the fact that the caravans can be sufficiently spaced about, and it is a replacement of a touring van with a static. I'm in favour of the officer's recommendation and I would propose that we grant. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Councillor Curtis. Thank you, Chair. Um, just picking up on a couple of Councillor Mills points. Again, I, the retrospective nature of this concerns me. Um, and looking at policy CS21, um, point one, the site is not located within the green belt unless there are very special circumstances or in the Cotswolds area of outstanding natural beauty. Um, and the other point that concerns me is, um, I, I beg your pardon, let me just, um, yeah, I'm, Yes, uh, point three, if, if located in proximity to the Cotswolds AO and AV, the site will have a buffer of appropriate scale and landscaping to minimise any adverse visual impact. And we have heard that the previous landscaping conditions haven't yet been met. So I'm, there are just a few issues around this that do concern me. Thank you. I reiterate the point that I made earlier on that, um, uh, and uh, as uh, as Erin did as well, the landscaping, there is a condition in there for landscaping and it is down to our enforcement team to ensure that that does come forward. If they're in breach of conditions, then obviously we take the appropriate action. Councillor Kendall. Thank you, Chairman. Um, like a lot of people have said already, I, I share the rather human irritation with the idea of retrospective planning applications, but that's not that's not part of our planning grounds for making a judgment. It's a completely different situation. I agree with everything Councillor Dixon said in terms of uh, this being a suitable location for an additional site. I don't find this to be any substantial harm. I'm happy to second his recommendation to grant. Well, thank you very much, Councillor Kendall. Does anyone else have anything they would like to contribute to the debate at this stage? Councillor Fleming? I'm not sure why people are surprised this is retrospective. They usually are. Um, and the thing about this, I've got direct experience of this in Bidford with two sites um, and they're always retrospective. We have refused them in the past. Inspectors always overturn them. Um, at the last one, just a bit of brief history, at the last one that, that we refused a couple of years ago, the inspector overturned it. So when they put in another one to increase again, we said the inspector said no incremental increases. When the planning officer came back quite rightly and said, doesn't matter what the inspector said, every new application has to be treated separately. So there's no point in, in, in anybody sort of thinking that, oh, the inspector, you know, has to overturn it or whatever else. They will get overturned because Stratford does have a shortage of sites. Um, I'm going to work with Councillor Pemberton, who specialise in this, and, and we do have a shortage of sites. So from that perspective, it's always very difficult if ever, to get these things stopped. So I'm just going to throw that. So it's unlikely I'll be supporting the officer's recommendation, but I know it'll happen. So, you know, it's a, it's almost a kind of a, a, it's a buffer, but it's not going to stop it. Thank you. 
Understood. Thank you very much. Uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. We have got a shortage um, that has been borne out in the uh, officer's report, which I think is very detailed and thorough. Um, uh, and, and we have to meet that shortage, sadly. OK, so unless anyone else has anything they want to add to the debate at this point, we will move to a vote. It has been proposed and seconded that we grant in line with the officer's recommendation and with the additional notes on the update sheet. So could I please have a show of hands for those in favour? Four, five. Six. 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 And those against? Three. And abstentions? One. So, committee therefore resolves to grant application 2101423FUL as say in line with the officer's recommendation and the two additional notes on the update sheet. Okay, uh, we'll move now to our final item of the evening, uh, which is application reference 2102302FUL, that is uh, Pitten Hill Cottages, Pitten Hill in Kyneton. Uh, our presenting officer is once again Erin Witherston. Erin, as soon as you're ready, you are free to begin. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. The application site lies to the west of Kyneton, outside the settlement boundaries for this main rural centre and within a valued landscape as identified by the adopted neighbourhood development plan. The application site is identified by the black dot on this plan just here. This slide shows the application site outlined in red. The site comprises of a parcel of open land to the rear of Pitton Hill Cottages, which was recently converted into a single dwelling. Access to the site is proposed via the existing residential access to the south, through the garden, to the siting of the new building. The site has a neighbouring property located just here, known as Flaxlands, and to the south, a new development for 78 dwellings is currently being built out. Open fields lie to the north of the site and to the east. Planning Commission is sought for the erection of a building which is proposed for private equestrian and agricultural storage uses with associated access from the road. This will be linked to the occupants of Pitton Hill Cottages. This slide shows an aerial image of the area with the approximate location of the new building outlined in red. There's open land visible on this slide to the north and to the south you can see the early stages of the development being built out for the 78 dwellings. It has now progressed beyond this point um, so this slide isn't up to date in terms of the image. Kyneton is visible just here to the southeast of the site and the land rises as you go up the road in the northwestern direction. This slide shows proposed elevations and floor plans for the new building and the proposed site plan. See the site plan here, with the access going through the garden to the rear to the paddock with the proposed building in an L-shaped plan form just here. The building will be simple in design and have a ridge height of approximately 3.2 metres and an eaves height of approximately 2.2 metres. The building will contain two stables, a hay barn, tack room and agricultural machinery storage area. The existing access will be adjoined onto the B486, just in this location here, and the building set just beyond the boundary of the paddock. This slide shows a photograph taken from the residential development from the south, looking in a northerly direction, and you see Pitton Hill cottages just to the left of this image. This photograph shows a proposed access. The left image was taken from within the application site, you can see the property just here, looking towards the road, and the photograph on the right of this slide was from the road and you can see the gated access point just here to the right of the dwelling. This slide shows a number of photographs taken from within the application site. So looking back from the wider paddock towards Pitton Hill Cottages, you can see just here with the edge of their garden just here by the fence. And this other photograph is taken looking in more of a north direction to see the neighbouring properties just to give a context to the site. This photograph was taken looking towards the application site from the edge of the paddock you can see to the south the development and just panning around with this final photograph you can see the properties being built out to the south of the application site there are no updates on this application and it's recommended that planning permission be granted subject to conditions and notes for the reasons outlined within the officer report thank you Aaron thank you very much indeed uh, we will get our first speaker on this item who is Councillor David Gosling Councillor Gosling good evening and welcome You've got a good idea of the drill, I think, by now. So you'll have three minutes whenever you're settled and ready to go. If you press the button in the middle to turn the microphone on, um, you can start whenever you're comfortable.
Good evening, all. At the beginning of last year, a redevelopment of an existing building on the opposite side of Pitton Hill, opposite side to this application, was seen by a planning officer as not acceptable because it constituted development outside the settlement boundary. And that was despite the proposal supporting the growth of a successful local agricultural research and development company, which would generate increased employment opportunities. The Parish Council supported that application. This application before you this evening, on the other hand, is new build outside of the built up area boundary and it creates no employment opportunities. The planning officer states that it complies with policy AS10 and I hope you've taken the opportunity to look at this policy in detail. Um, the officer's report under the heading principles of development cites sub clause R as supporting part of the development. Not only is the development not using existing buildings or structures, but it is not a business. Business is the overriding qualifier for sub clause R. The officer then cites sub clause O to justify the remaining part of the development and sub clause O also falls under that qualifier of business, which this development is clearly not and confirmed by the officer as for private use. Lastly, under AS10, sub clause S, with its qualifier of tourism leisure, is offered to support the grant recommendation. Please look closely at the wording and ask where the local employment is created or additional use of local services will be generated. So this is not compliant with policy CS24, which is about tourism leisure, which seeks to ensure that all forms of tourism and leisure development are designed to maximise benefits for communities affected in terms of job opportunities and support for local services. Under the heading of design, just in passing, um, in paragraph one, it says access is by the existing driveway, and then that's contradicted in paragraph four, which states a new access track will be established. Not sure which is the case. Um, we believe that this misinterpretation of selected clauses to justify the recommendation to you this evening of grant is totally unacceptable and request that you vote against the officer's recommendation. There is no policy within the kind of neighbourhood development plan which supports new development outside the settlement boundary. Your grounds for refusal would be non-compliance with the Kyneton Neighbourhood Development Plan, possibly policies H1 and E2, and the District Council's core strategy policies AS10 and CS24. Thank you. Perfect. I was just about to give you a 30 second warning, but there was no need. So thank you very much, uh, Councillor Gosling. Members, do we have any questions for Councillor Gosling, please? No? In that case, Councillor Gosling, thank you very much for your time and contribution this evening, and thank you very much for sorting the desk out for us. And while you're finishing up, I will uh, call forward our next speaker, who is Mr. Gary Moss, our agent. Um, I do have a Mr. Cook as well, our applicant. Are you both going to be speaking? Just yourself. For the time being, if you want to come forward and sit and take a seat. Um, Mr. Cook, I'm assuming you're here for questions just in case. So if there are any questions, obviously at that time, I'll call you forward. Uh, for the time being, you, I think you can enjoy the comfort of your current seat. OK. Mr. Moss, you'll have three minutes. I'll give you a 30 second warning. You know the drill when you're ready.
Mr Moss, thank you very much. Well within your time, members. Do we have any questions for either Mr Moss or Mr Cook? Councillor Curtis, please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, you mentioned that um, Clause AS10, you feel supports this application. Could you identify which particular clauses in that policy you feel support this application? Thank you. First of all, I'd obviously just refer you to the officer's principal section in their thing, which clearly uh, confirms that in their professional Yes, opinion, um, it's sorry, implied. Chair, I, I was asking actually if you could identify specifically which, because you, you said that you feel um, this is supported by policy AS10. I would like you to identify which sections of that policy you feel specifically support this application. Thank I you. mean, specifically, in, I, mean, I would say part S, which supports uh, small scale leisure based uses. Equine, even for private use, is clearly a leisure use. It has to happen in the countryside by the nature of the development is proposed. So therefore, under policy AS10, which is countryside and villages, it is supported. I can't remember the exact clause, but if you read at the very bottom of policy AS10 as well, there's like a, an or covering element to it, which says uh, development that is appropriate um, or justified through other policies. I can't remember the exact wording. Hopefully you've, you've probably got Chair, it. There I can read. give you the exact wording. Um, will need to be fully justified, offer significant benefits to the local area. I think that's probably what we refer. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so even again, going back to my main point, if you have an equine use, albeit private, where can it be located? I cannot see how you can locate such a use in a built up area boundary. It just doesn't seem practical to me in that sense. So to me, the only policy relevant would be the countryside and villages policy, which is AS10. And again, there are clearly benefits to the local economy, even from a private equestrian. Yeah, Mr. Master, sorry, I'm going, to, I'm going to stop you there. And, and I apologise that you've been cut over twice by one of our members. Um, you have now answered the question. Um, I think we can move on. Uh, does anyone else have any other questions for Mr. Moss or our client? Uh, or, oh, Mr. Cook. Um, Councillor Fleming, please. Um, looking at the at the the sketch with the the red line plan, in how many acres does this does this development sit? I mean, do do the people have some 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 grazing land around this area? You know where. Where yeah. the stable blocks going to be built or proposed to be built, is that within their own sort of uh, grazing area to, for keeping the horses there? Yes. So the the, the application site is, um, although constrained yeah. to the red line, the actual paddock field um, is in the ownership of the applicant as well. Okay. So and they do have immediate land. There's no requirement for. And, and looking at again, looking at, uh, at the, the the layout map. Um, if it sits in open countryside, if it's only just if it's less than three meters tall, can anybody else see it from the back garden? Is it going to be detrimental? Is it going to cause harm in what people can see? In, I think the photographs and, and as the case officers presented, um, I mean, you will see it. There are, you know, yeah. uh, views of the building, um, okay. but in terms of its location, um, it, you know, and size and scale, it's not going to be a a prominent feature in the landscape and again because of its nature equine agricultural use it will be an appropriate building in such a location yeah. it's okay. not like a a, a, you know, a residential building which would look perhaps no. okay. um, out of character okay thank you thank you chair okay any further questions for either mr moss or mr cook no in that case thank you very much for your contribution and time this evening OK, uh, we have no other registered uh, speakers on this item, so we'll move to points of clarification to our officers. Does anyone have any points of clarification for Aaron, please? No. <laughs> Councillor Adam. Um, just with regards to the concerns, Mark, just, please, Councillor Adam. Just with regards to the concerns of the Parish Council um, and AS10 about <clears throat> private use versus business use. Um, I, uh, just some clarification more than anything, really. I don't, don't think more specific.
So in terms of this case, we've looked at all the policies in AS10 and the NDP as well. Um, and in terms of the principle, um, it's part R talks about a question in AS10, but it's part S where it's small scale leisure. In this case, we feel it meets that part and CS24. Um, so from an officer's point of view, we feel it meets the provisions of AS10 and the relevant NDP policies in terms of the principle for private use. OK, any other questions at this point? And otherwise, we'll move into debate. Who would like to kick us off? Councillor Jennings, please. Oh, just an excuse to get that off. <laughs> right. Um, I understand. Uh, so it's interesting listening to that. Uh, sorry, and the, the minor benefits to the local economy. Well, my wife has horses. It's not minor. It costs her a fortune. Well, it costs, it costs <laughs> us a fortune. So it certainly contributes a lot to the local economy. But I, I'm happy that this that this satisfies uh, AS10 clause S. Um, it's for it's for leisure based. I, again, I don't see how you can set up a stable block um, in the middle of a built up area boundary. I I don't have an issue with this at all. I don't see any material planning reasons to go against the officer's recommendation for grant, and I'd like to propose that. Councillor James, thank you very much. Councillor Kendall. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, I think you've said what I was going to, what I was thinking too. I certainly understand the parish council's frustration, especially comparing. Um, one application with another. I can understand how sometimes you, it's difficult to see the difference between those. And I can, I, that's why I understand the frustration there. But I, I fail to see any demonstrable harm from this. I think the applicant's agent said it quite well. Where else are you going to put this sort of a facility? And yes, I think there will be benefit to the community. So I'm happy to second the proposal. Thank you very much. Does anyone else like to contribute towards the debate at this point? No. OK, in that case, we have a proposal. It has been seconded to grant in line with the officer's recommendation. Could I please have a show of hands for those in favour, please? That is unanimous. OK, so committee therefore resolves to grant application 2102302FUL, uh, Pitten Hill, Costures, Pitten Hill in Kyneton. Um, I don't believe we have any other business or any urgent business. No, in that case, um, it reminds me to thank you all for your contributions this evening, your time, um, and I will close the meeting there. Thank you very much.